Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I'm Shannon and I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist and I like to make tutorials on YouTube. So this has been a very highly requested um, tutorial and I ran a little poll on Instagram for which reference photo to choose and everyone helped me out to pick this reference photo. So hopefully you'll like this tutorial and you'll be able to gain a lot from it. I'll be using polychromos from Faber-Castell in this video so if you don't have polychromos don't feel discouraged you can just use whatever you can get your hands on and I'll describe the colours best as I can so that you can find a similar colour but yeah that's my favourite pencil brand so I'll be using those today and um, this is a 7x9 inch piece of Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper in the 600 600 GSM? 650? Anyway, I'll link it down below, but again, if you don't have the same paper, don't feel like you can't do the tutorial. Just might not come out looking exactly the same, but let's be honest, no matter how many different people could draw the same thing, it'll never look the same anyway, so don't worry. There will be a link to download the line drawing in the description, so if you want to use the tracing method, you can just download it, print it out and then trace over it and transfer it to your drawing paper. I've got a video on how you can do that, so I'll link that down below. And, and tracing isn't cheating, so don't feel like you're cheating if you're doing that, but you can also freehand if you really want to. And everything else will also be listed down below, the coloured pencil list, the extra tools that I'm using, like the sharpener that I use and whatnot. So yeah, have a look down there if there's anything you would like to know. And without further ado, let's just get started. Just got my reference photo on my iPad next to me here so that I can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to start with the eyes. I always start with the eyes and if you've seen any of my other tutorials then you probably know that already. And I pretty much always use the same method of um, using dark sepia which is like a really dark brown, nearly not quite black but like the next shade down from it. And I use that to sort of go around the eye and just map in where it is as a little guide. So I'll just go around the outside. So I'll start on this left eye, make sure my pencil's really sharp and I, I use this Derwent Superpoint manual sharpener to make sure it's nice and sharp like this and I'll link that down below. But I'm just gonna go around that eye. Paying really close attention to the shape of it by constantly looking at the reference photo. And I'm just going to map in, sort of like where that eye ends, around the edges. It's quite hard to see it because it is quite a dark area of the photo, there's a lot of dark fur. So just get the shape as best you can. Not pressing on hard at all for that bit really. And then I'm gonna just start colouring it in, but there's like a really little subtle highlight here that I want to keep in. So I'm just gonna draw around that. Leave it white because you'll never get the highlights as white as the paper itself. Even if you use like a white colour, a white coloured pencil on top, it'll never go like a nice crisp white. So I always leave the highlights in the eye white. And I'm just going to colour around the rest of this eye, like that. There we go, so that left eye is nearly done. And I'm going to start on the right eye now. I just want to get the basic shape of the eyes in. So just going around. like that and then same again gonna leave this little highlight 
Sometimes I draw them a little bit bigger than what they look like on the picture just so that they pop a little bit more and then colour in the rest of the eye. There is like the tiny, tiniest little light of it down here, just about there. And I'm just going to go over it lightly so that you can just about see it. Really subtle. You probably can't even see it at all, to be honest. I even just use my um, Museum Aquarelle White, which is my favourite white. And I'll show you how I mean with it never going as white as the paper itself. So I'm just going to add that over that little light of it. There we go. Just to add a tiny bit of detail there because they'll look a bit flat otherwise these eyes. And do you see what I mean? It doesn't go that white, it just sort of lightens it a little bit. So that's why I like to leave the highlights nice and crisp. Like that. Make it a little bit smaller I think. There we go. And then I'm going to use my favourite colour for adding a bit of a blue pop to the highlight and that is light cobalt turquoise which is just like a light turquoise colour and it just adds a really nice like pop of colour to the highlights and I pretty much always use this to be honest most of the time because obviously the sky will be reflected in the eyes of the hedgehog with it being outside. So usually you do get a little bit of a bluey tone in that highlight but it's very subtle. So that is that. And then I'm going to use a base colour to start building up the fur around the eyes. So that base colour is going to be cold grey one and you might have watched some of my tutorials before but if not I'll explain like why I use base colours and like during the fur and stuff. So the paper itself, the Fabriano especially, has got a tiny little bit of a grain to it like very subtle but there is a bit of a texture. So if you went straight on adding the fur it would look a bit grainy and it wouldn't be very easy to put on. So you want to use a base colour that's quite a light colour usually like this cold grey one or warm grey one that's another good one but because the fur is quite cool and the lightest colour that I can see is more of like a cold grey colour that's why I'm going to use this one and you just use it to smooth the paper out and then any colours that you apply on top of that it goes on really nice and smooth and effortlessly so that is why I do that so I'm just going to dab away the pencil marks a little bit so I can't really see them. <laughs> it looks really weird now but it's fine. Um, and then I'm just going to start adding this cold grey one to all the sort of like cooler areas because it does get a bit warmer as it goes further out the face so concentrating it to the middle of the face and I'm pressing like reasonably hard enough to get like a smooth even coverage but not enough that it's like hurting my hand or anything oh please ignore the orange knuckles I did my tan last night and it's gone very orange so please please just pretend like that's not there So I'm just going to go around, I'm just going to concentrate it to the middle to begin with. It does look really weird at this point but don't worry, we'll sort it out. I'm just going to sort of feather some strokes out a little bit so it's not so harsh at the edge there. some of these lines away a bit 
because it sort of just gradually just blend into that warm a bit so it'll be helpful doing it this way and sort of feathering it out then in the middle here sort of like a darker bit in the middle so the first sort of parts like that in a little v-shape to reveal like a warmer bit of fur well you could probably even the spines actually underneath but yeah I think um, spines are really hard to draw so I think that's why a lot of people wanted to draw a hedgehog wanted a hedgehog tutorial so hopefully hopefully this goes all right this is the second time I filmed this so yeah first one didn't go to plan I used too many colors and I thought no this is too complicated try and simple it down a bit because it doesn't need to be that complicated I want you to be able to use these tutorials if you like a beginner so yeah it just I went too far with it <laughs> Second time, lucky. Right, I'm going to leave it at that for now and I'm going to start adding some detail into this fur on the left side. So I think I'm going to start with the dark sepia just to add in the really dark bits. So, if you look at the picture there's like little light bits of fur parking over the dark bits and you can either do that one of two ways. You can draw negatively which is the way I've always done it but more recently I picked up one of these uh, slice tools which is like a ceramic blade and you can use that to scratch off the pencil but you do have to build it up quite dark to be able to do that and not everyone's going to have a slice tool so I think I'm going to try and do it the way I've always done it but if there's any areas of this drawing that could do with the slice tool being used I might use it but yeah I do recommend getting one of those if you're like serious about drawing animals with colour pencil Um, I could do like a whole video on that if, if you wanted I've only recently got it so I'm not an expert on it by any means but anyway I'm gonna start building up this fur and literally what I'm gonna do is just draw around some of these little lighter hairs that are parking over Try and like draw the negative space in. I'm not going to go too far with this dark sepia because I do want to build the fur up with a bit of a lighter colour first. I think this is just to sort of map in where the darker bits are. dark a bit just under that eye it's just like a lot of weird looking shapes really you're just paying attention to where the dark little shapes are and just drawing them in Little bits of fur going round there. Like that. Now that looks weird at the minute, but we're going to start building it up with another colour, so don't worry. Right, so now we've just sort of mapped that bit in where all the darker bits are. I'm going to try using warm grey 5. I think that's V. Is that 5? I think it is. So now I'm just going to start doing little fur strokes. And blending it into those darker areas. Not pressing on hard at all. And I'm sort of just gradually building up that fur texture. I'm just doing little strokes like just really tiny little strokes just to build it up.
think there is like a bit of a browny tone in there too. I'm just following the direction of the fur with these little strokes. There we go, and then I'm going to start doing some little fur strokes in this bit as well. So I'm not doing like, these fur strokes aren't like straight like that. I like to kind of be a bit more loose and do like little squiggly fur strokes like that. And then they look more natural. So they all sort of like cross over each other and they're a bit wiggly and you can hold your pencil a bit further down like rather than holding it like this, hold it like this and you can get more like squiggly little strokes. So I hope that makes sense but that's the sort of stroke that I'm using to just start building up the fur. And often I'll do like little V shapes like this, little pointy shapes. And that makes it look a bit clumpy and it makes it look like the fur is all like sitting on top of each other. So you might be able to see that I do those little motions like sometimes. Just trying to follow the direction of the fur on the picture. Sort of like curls round like this and then starts curling back that way. There we go, and then I'm just going to carry on building the sphere up in the middle. It's all very like clumpy and all over the place. I think we definitely need a bit of brown in there. But I'll just use this colour to map it all in and then we can start adding some more colours afterwards. A lot of different colours in this fur, but I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. Just going to use that dark sepia again to start building up the dark bit at this side. So again, just sort of like drawing in the little dark shapes, leaving the odd little light bit for a lighter hair to park through. Like that.
just at the bottom of her eye. Right, and then I'll go back to the warm grey five. Making sure to leave lots of little light gaps in between because there are some really light hairs. Right, I think I'm going to start adding a bit of the dark sepia, sort of like, into this middle bit. Just so I can see where the slightly darker bits are. Just to map in a bit of the darker bits. So we're doing those little like pointy like little V shapes. It's a lot darker in the middle and then it gets lighter at each side. Add a little dark line there where that middle little V pointy shape is. And a little bit darker as you get to the edge where it blends up into the warm a bit. Just like to add little guidelines, little areas where I can see where one bit ends and another bit starts. I'm going to carry on adding a bit of that dark sepia in the middle. suppose we're using quite like warm colours on top of the cold grey, but it, it's nice because it adds like a bit of um, an interesting tone. Because you can still see that cold colour poking through. It's nice. Darken up that bit a bit more. Right, I think we need a bit of like a brown colour. So let's see. I'm going to try adding a bit of nougat which is like a a neutral sort of brown, it's not warm and it's not too cool, it's just like a medium brown colour and I'm just going to add some little bits of brown into this fur. Just like look for the brown areas, just really lightly just start blending it into some of that fur. And I'm making sure again to leave some little gaps for these lighter hairs to poke through. Just trying to really softly blend it in.
starting to build up that fur texture nicely. Right, I'm going to start adding some more dark sepia. I think it definitely needs to be a bit darker. It's looking a bit flat. So I'm going to go in and really darken up the dark areas now. Especially around the eyes. So I'm just pressing on a tiny bit harder, but still like really gradually building up the colour. I'm going to darken this bit up a little bit more. And then I'm going to do the other eye and then I'll move on to the middle bit. So it's a bit lighter around here and then there's a few darker little hairs. There we go, right, and I'm going to start just adding a few darker bits in the middle. I'm just sort of darkening it up in little clumps.
get in there. Right, now I think I'm going to add, there's like a bit of like a turquoisey tone to this fur and I want to add that in really subtly. And then there's like a nice contrast between the warm bits and the bluey bits. It'll look really good. So I'm going to go back to that light cobalt turquoise and I'm just going to really, oh I've got a weird bit on that pencil, I'm just going to really lightly just blend that over some of the lighter hairs. Really, really lightly, like I'm barely even pressing on it all. Just adds a really nice tone. I love that, that looks really good. Right, I think I just need to darken up around the eyes a little bit more. So I'm just gonna use that dark sepia and just ever so slightly darken it up a little bit more. The eyes do get a little bit lost in this because the fur is so dark around it. Just add a little bit of a line there. I'm going to start adding a bit of detail into this little bit. Little be pointy shapes. Sort of just curve around to follow the direction of the fur. Darken this little bit up. And I'm going to add a bit of that warm grey five again. blend it through this bit and back to that dark sepia I'm going to blend it out Darken this bit up a little bit more. There's lots of like little light hairs here just poking through the dark bit, so just trying to imitate that a little bit. I'm going to use the light cobalt turquoise to make them like a turquoise tone. And I'm going to bring that colour just down that nose a little bit. It doesn't really matter too much whether you go like first or last with this colour. It works either way. And then I'm just going to use the dark sepia and just start adding a little bit more. 
bit of detail and I'm just going to keep building it up with the dark sepia and the warm grey 5. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go warm grey 5 first. And back to the dark sepia. I need a little bit of black. I tend to use black quite sparingly because it can get a bit smudgy if you put too much on. So I'm just going to darken up the eyes a little bit. Just make them stand out a little bit more. Just got a bit lost in there. And I'm going to use a tiny bit of black just to darken up these like inner corner bits, if that makes sense, like these little, little inner corners of the eyes and a little bit underneath the eye. And then same again at this side. I'm only using it very sparingly and I'll just have to be careful later that I don't smudge it with my hand. It's got a bit of dark sepia there. just start bringing the fur down a tiny bit more. So I'm going to use that cold grey one and just going to start blending it out a little bit more. lines away a bit. I'm just going to start bringing that fur out a tiny bit more. And I'm just going to use the warm grey 
five were it yeah the, the color we were using before yeah we're gonna go five and just gonna start building up a little bit more that fur And at this side. There we go. Just gonna blend it down a little bit. And a few little hairs there. A few more here. Right, and I'm going to use a bit of dark sepia. Just darken up between some of these little hairs. Darken this bit up a little bit. Just blending it out. I think a little bit more, just down this middle bit. Like that. And I'm going to add the tiniest bit of like a warmer brown colour just to the right hand sides and left hand side there. So this is raw umber and it's a really nice warm brown colour so I'm just going to add a little bit just to this edge up here. Just where it's a bit warmer. gonna look so nice when we start adding those like warmer bits of fur and the spines and stuff. And then I'm gonna add the tiniest bit of burnt umber. Just start blending that. It's kind of like a, a warm dark brown colour. Blending that. Through that right hand side, 
and this left hand side. And a little bit round here. I won't go too much further with that for this video. It looks a little bit weird at this point, but once we do more of the face, it'll start to look a bit more like an actual head job and not like a weird little patch of fluff. So yeah, I think I'll leave it there and in the next video, we'll carry on drawing more of the face. So I hope you've enjoyed this first part. Make sure to like this video if you did and subscribe to see the next part and I will see you in the next video. So bye bye for now.